script. How many people have at least given their icebreaker? Ah, if you haven't given your icebreaker, please do so. It is the best experience possible. You have four to six minutes to just get up there and talk. And talking to a camera is actually easier. It's all in your head. It's easier to talk to a camera alone in your living room than it is to talk to an audience of 15, 20 people. I dug out my actual old communication. If you go through your 10 speeches, you have your, your actual script. The icebreaker. Make your video between four and six minutes. You will lose the audience and you go much beyond that. If you go much beyond that, it's education and you want them to pay for it anyway. Organize your speech. You know you need a beginning and an ending and a good middle. Now let me apply that to video. Your beginning and your ending includes the title slides I talked about. You have your title slide, no more than 10 seconds. You have your 30 second open, which is to grab them and make them want to actually listen to you. The trick is to make sure you use the term of the audience. I started here. I said, you're all video stories. Now, didn't that kind of make you squirm and everything? But at least it got you involved. The last 30 seconds is the circle. You will close the circle and actually bring you in to the end. And I will, you'll hear at the end of the speech where I'm going to bring it back to saying that you can be slow. You just have to make the effort. The stuff in the middle is your normal speech. What she did on the snowball is that she said, come visit us. That is extremely important because people get distracted, they get focused on listening to your wonderful video, and they forget to do what to do next. Tell them to come visit you. Tell them to leave a comment on YouTube. Tell them to like you. And that is how you're going to reach the four million views. Because once you, they go down there and they see the other social networks, yes, I'm going to post this on my Facebook page that I liked it, I'm going to tweet about it, other people will come and watch your video. That is the secret to viral. And that is the difference on the speech. Get to the point. Do not ramble on your speech. You're Toastmasters. You know to actually get to the point. That's what people want to hear. How do you say it? Practice a few times. This is not where you're getting your speech. You actually are filming yourself and you can have like the movies with the clapboard. Take one. Take two. <coughs> take a thousand. It's okay. Just take it. And make sure that you are clear, concise, and to the point. Your body speaks is speech number five. Avoid the happy feet. But that doesn't mean you cannot use hand gestures. Talk to the people. Pull them in with your, your actions. Mention to them. Twist. Use all the action you want from the waist up. Vocal variety is just as important on a video as it is speaking to an audience. You're opening. Make sure you don't come out where it's the best thing in the world because then you have nowhere to go. And you want to keep people uplifted. Start in a medium tone so then you can tell them to get excited or you can slow them down. The other thing I would add about vocal variety is your choice of music. One of the video coaches we were doing, helping someone edit their wonderful video of selling the product that they were making, was a hockey game. It's a new magnetic hockey game, and they were having so much fun and bonus, and they wanted to show the action on the actual hockey table. 
The music they used was a lullaby. Now, I don't know if any of you have seen a hockey game on ice, but they do not look like they want to listen to a lullaby. <laughs> so you make sure that it's music. The vocal variety applies to the music as well. You have the music in the beginning, loud, through your tighter slides, and loud towards the ending. You have it go down while you're speaking. Whether you have it in the background or not, depends on if you have interim slides. Because you can now create a video, and I have an example here, where you can switch and say, let me just do a one minute talk. Now let me switch topics. Let me put another title slot in there. When you have a break when you're pulling in that slide with no noise in the background, you will lose the audience. The actual sound of nothing is deafening. So then you may want to just make sure that the music stays throughout and you want to find the same level. Research your topic. Talk about what you know. Analytically, more importantly, talk about what your passion is. Because it's your passion that will come out in your eyes. It's your passion that will come out in your voice. And it's your passion that people connect to first. Comfortable with visual aids. Software that you can use now, you can have visual aids in your video. Now here with Snowball, you had your visual aids where you had wonderful Snowball, and you didn't even notice the background. There was actually another parrot dancing in the background. That was not really part of the visual aid. That was something that was more the stage to just make it, the, make it more interesting. This is an example where I'm going to show you the title slides. And I had mentioned that it was going to be either hardware or software. The software I said I used for here was Camtasia. I pulled in some music. But my other software that I found very useful was Photoshop. I had an article where I was talking about using M&Ms and developing a business architecture. What I wanted to say in the beginning was that I took pictures throughout this thing. I had the music where I created my own title slide. Snowball just used a plain background. But when you saw the M&Ms, it caught your interest a little bit more. And it actually tied to what I was talking about in mentioning the M&Ms. What you cannot see very well here is you just look at the stage. Look what's in the corner in the middle. There's a mug. And if the lights were off, you were going to notice that that mug happens to have my company logo. I am not hard selling, but I have something in the background that most people are not even going to notice. Of course, there has to be a picture of my scarlet in the background, but you actually just sit there in the bank. The other thing you can do with software, if we continue just briefly here, is that I actually guide the people to the focus and I, uh, by zooming in to make sure it is closer on me. I had this using a flip, I mean using my Kodak camera. I just, all my background was, was a simple, simple dining room. At the end, I have a call to action by basically telling them where to find me. Same thing. The music goes down and then the music goes up. While I'm talking, I just fade it in. When I had the slide changes, I made sure that the music was still there just so they wouldn't have the deafening sound. Now this is very low key. I'm not doing it as a presentation where I'm trying to do it loud. Because what I also had with me was an audio recorder. I brought it around, the famous M&M line, tying it all together. Showing the M&Ms. You can be as creative as you want. And the more creativity on the fine line, you will actually be able to have many more people, many more watches. Now, I just loaded this, and I uh, literally battled a week ago, and I already have 26 people.